What's up everybody, my name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. We're back today with another beginner's streaming guide. So today I'll be showing you how to stream your games console via your PC streaming setup whilst tackling some common issues. This video directly follows on from what we learned during our beginner's guide to PC streaming video. So if you haven't seen that one yet, make sure you go ahead and watch that as I will be referring to parts of it. You can find that video here on KitGuru. If you already have some of the basics down but are experiencing issues like this, where streamed or captured footage is washed out, then don't worry, I'll be showing you how to fix that and make it look like this. At the end of the video, I'll address some other common issues that you may run into, so make sure you stick around until the end. As this video is mainly aimed at beginners and new creators, you may be thinking, how do I even get my console's feed into my PC to record or stream? And that's a great question. The answer is a dedicated bit of hardware called a capture card. Now these units take your game feed and let you bypass the unit straight into your TV or monitor while sending a copy of that feed to your PC ready to be streamed or recorded. So essentially, there's two types of capture cards. You have internal ones that plug into your PC's motherboard and external ones that use USB interfaces instead. Some can record in 4K for consoles like the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, whilst others let you pass through at 4K so that you can view your games in 4K while sending a 1080p feed to your PC to record or stream. As we're aiming this video at streamers, we'll be looking at sending a 1080p feed to the PC as we will be streaming at 720p. There are absolutely loads of capture cards on offer today in 2020, so luckily you have options that will fit most people's budgets. I've reviewed a fair few capture cards here at KitGuru, so if you're interested in in-depth explanations of certain models, then go check them out. For today's video, we'll be using Elgato's HD60S Plus external capture card, as this supports 4K60 HDR pass-through, whilst recording at 1080p 60 HDR as a maximum. And it records via a fast USB 3.0 connection. And Elgato's own software is pretty good too. Once we have our console signal, we're going to need a broadcasting software, in our case OBS Studio, to then stream our footage. First off, we need to download Elgato software. So make sure to download the right one for your own capture card, whether that's an Elgato product or a different branded one entirely. It doesn't really matter too much as the settings that we're going to take a look at will be similar regardless of the brand. Next, hook up your capture card. So take the HDMI coming out of your console and plug it into the input of your capture card. And then take a second HDMI cable and plug it into the output port of your capture card and then plug the other end into your TV or your monitor. And then all you need to do is take your USB cable and plug that into a compatible USB port on your PC. Now the biggest issue I see for new streamers and content creators getting console footage is incorrect color settings. Whether that's down to the colors are being washed out and almost hazy looking, or the exact opposite where colors are oversaturated with crushed blacks and blown out whites. Now ideally, we want to find the sort of happy middle ground in there and have a true representation of how the games were intended for us to be played. So that's our first port of call. Let's get those colors looking right. Before we go anywhere near OBS Studio, we need to open our capture card software. In our case, that's Elgato's 4K capture utility. Providing that you've plugged in your cables right earlier, you should already see your console screen in the software. But we're going to go to settings and click the device tab. We're going to focus on HDMI color range to get those colors right. But before we select an option, I'm going to go to my console, which in our case is a Nintendo Switch, and head down to settings and TV output. Now this should be pretty much the exact same for all consoles. Now you should see an option somewhere in there called RGB range. In here, we have three options, automatic, full range, and limited range. This directly relates to the type of TV you have, and it doesn't matter the age, but some monitors or TVs support full range via HDMI, and others support a limited range. 
check your screen's manual or the manufacturer's website to confirm which your model supports. However, if you can't find the information, then don't worry. There's normally an automatic setting, so you can just leave it on this, but you can adjust it later if you have mixed results in our next step. Going back to our capture card software settings under HDMI color range, we have three options. We have bypass, expand, and shrink. If we select expand, our colors become washed out, lacking detail, and I see this fairly often. On the opposite end, if we choose shrink, you may jump up thinking, wow, this looks really good, but our image is now totally oversaturated, our blacks are crushed, so there's no detail in the darker areas or shadows, and our whites are also blown out. Now, if we choose bypass, it's about halfway between the two. It's not washed out, nor is it oversaturated keeping details in the highlights and the shadows, and this is the correct setting for my setup with my switch on automatic. Despite my switch being set to automatic, it's basically choosing a limited RGB range as that's my monitor's requirement. If you're using a full range, then you may have different results to me, but do not worry, I'm going to show you all three examples on the screen at once, so you can pause the video, check how your game feed is looking, and then adjust your HDMI color range settings accordingly. Simply try out each, so try bypass, expand, and shrink until you get the desired image. Now we've got our colors right, it's pretty much plain sailing from here. Let's head over to OBS Studio. Now, in our previous beginner's guide to streaming that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we have already set up OBS settings for streaming. We've added an overlay, our microphone, our webcam, and all of our settings. So all that's left to do is add our console's capture card feed as a source. So click the plus button or right click and add video capture device, and then select your capture card and click OK. And that's it. Yes, there's other options within the preferences window. However, for most, Leaving these at default will be absolutely fine since we set our color space in our capture card software. Now this is a beginner's guide after all, so I don't want to overload you with too much information here, but now you can start streaming your favorite console games. Just hit start streaming whenever you're ready. Now there are a few issues that can crop up during this process that I've explained, so let's quickly touch on those as an added bonus. First of all, if you're using a PS4, then you will need to head to the system settings and disable HDCP to be able to send your feed through the capture card and into your PC because with it enabled, it will not work. And this is to stop you being able to record Netflix and things like that. You know, they, they don't want you doing that. If you're trying to bypass 4K footage through a compatible capture card, console, and TV, and you're having issues, then you may be using the wrong HDMI cable. You need to be using HDMI 2.0 cables for 4K pass-through. Another issue you may find is that you see your game feed in OBS, but then there's stuttering issues and it's a bit laggy, or maybe it's completely disconnected and it doesn't show at all. This could be down to the fact that you're using a USB 2.0 port when your unit requires USB 3.0, or if you're using a USB 3.0, then you may be overloading the bandwidth. Maybe you have webcams, microphones, keyboards, mice, and everything else plugged in at the back and around the port that you're plugging the capture card in, and that can be an issue. Instead, try using a USB 3.0 port on the front I.O. panel of your PC on the front of the case, or a USB 3.0 extender into an available USB-C port if you have one. And there we have it. You should be up and running, ready to stream your latest games and start your streaming journey. Now, how have you guys enjoyed our streaming tutorials? Please let us know down in the comments. Now, if you have liked this video, hit the thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring the notification bell, you can check out our merchandise down below and check out our website daily for tech news. I've been Andy, this is Kitguru, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.